Hey there, and welcome back to Don't Open That Door. I'm Justin, the kid who knows a little more than he lets on. I'm Nico, the dude who knows way less than everyone thinks, actually. And I'm Dan, the slender man of this universe. <sighs> okay, okay. And uh, we are here today to talk about Fear Street, part one, 1994. So this was directed by Lee Janayak, and it's starring Kiana Madeira as Dina, Sadie Sink as Sam, Julia Rewald as Kate, Benjamin Flores Jr. as Josh, and Fred Hetchwinger as Simon. So we open with a bookstore employee in the small town of Shadyville. After closing, she begins to get ready to leave, but is killed by a man wearing a skull mask, and the killer is then shot by the police. You see, Shadyside is actually the murder capital of the United States. Killings happen all the time in this town. Seemingly normal people go on killing sprees, and many town members believe that this is the result of a witch's curse placed by Sarah Fire, or Fear, a woman who was killed in 1666 under accusations of witchcraft. But Nico, go ahead and introduce us to our main characters. So, we are introduced to Dina, a high school student, and her younger brother Josh at their home. Dina is still getting over a breakup with her girlfriend Sam, who moved to Sunnyvale, which is the bitter rival of their town Shadyside. And Josh is a nerd with a passion for researching murders that take place in the local town. Shadyside and Sunnyvale have a football match that night, but first, the two towns hold a vigil. Tensions rise between the two teams at the vigil, and en route to the game, Sam and her new boyfriend tailgate the bus that Dina, her friend Kate, and the football team are on. Dina accidentally throws a pretty hefty container at the car that Sam is in, causing it to crash, and Sam has to go to the hospital. There's no room for that malarkey on the road, so what happens? Now, Dina, Kate, and their friend Simon head to the hospital where Dina confronts Sam about their relationship. They don't really get a ton of time to talk, though, because the serial killer from the mall, from the bookstore before, yep, same one that was shot dead by the cops, Aww. murders Sam's new boyfriend and comes after <laughs> Sam and Dina. Kate, Dina, Simon, and Sam all escape and head to the police department, but nobody believes them. Simon is also attacked by a young woman who can't be stopped by bullets, but eventually escapes and they make their way back to Dina's house. At Dina's house, they relay the situation to Josh, and he realizes that they're being attacked by serial killers from the town's own history. You see, when Sam got into that car accident, she accidentally disturbed the grave of Sarah Fire, or Fear. Josh postulates that if they gave her bones a proper burial, they might be able to stop the killers. Yeah, that doesn't work. The group then realize that the killers aren't after the group, they're actually just after Sam because she was the one who disturbed the grave, and they only chased after the other people because they had Sam's blood on them. Hmm, that's an interesting kind of twist, but Nico, take us from there. So we've got some things related to blood happening here, which happens a lot in horror movies. <laughs> so the friends use her blood to lure the killers into a bathroom and set them on fire, but they pull some Majin Buu shit and just regenerate and come right back after them. So the group think back to the old rhymes from the town, and they kind of like nursery rhymes type stuff, and they realize that the witch won't stop until Sam is dead. But Josh goes back through some articles and realizes that someone from the past had actually survived one of the previous victims. So Sam can too. Now the group realized that they have to temporarily kill Sam, meaning like, you know, stop her heart, all that, and then revive her in order to get the witch off of their trails. Mm. Sounds pretty easy, right, Deb? Yeah, easy enough, you know, killing people. <laughs> so now they head to the grocery store where Simon works and they come up with a plan to have Sam OD on drugs while the remainder of the group paint her blood on themselves this to lure the so killers away. This bad. Yeah, not a very good plan. <laughs> yeah, not at all. <laughs> and go figure, it really doesn't work very well as Kate and Simon are killed and Sam doesn't get a chance to OD, even though she does kind of take a bunch of pills. She doesn't finish all of them. So in an act of desperation, Dina drowns Sam in a lobster tank and then revives her causing the killers to disappear. Nice. Yeah, temporarily anyways. 
So now the movie ends with Sam and Dina spending the night together. Dina gets a phone call from the survivor of the attack in 1978, and she tells Dina that the witch won't stop until she gets Sam. Sam then becomes possessed and tries to attack Dina, but Dina wraps her up with the phone cable and swears that she'll get her back. Then we kind of see some shots from the sequel of this Fear Street trilogy, and the movie ends with a to be continued. Nice. Nice. So nice. a real quick disclaimer for our listeners here. We are going to be doing our reviews as we watch the movies in this trilogy. So as of recording, we haven't seen parts two or three. So we don't know what's going on and any postulations or theories that we might make are solely based on our observances from this first movie right here. So let's go ahead and start off. Dan, talk to me about the uh, audio here. So I, I liked it. I mean, on a technical perspective, I thought it all sounded pretty darn good. You know, there are no glaring errors or anything. And I thought the music was pretty cool too. It was a lot of 90s music. Now for being technical, not all of it was from 94 and previous, but uh -huh. that's okay. Uh, Can't I'll fucking do pass. this. I'll give it a pass. They were from <laughs> the 90s. Uh, but you know we had we had a good uh, song from Bush, the the fucking Machine Head song. Yep. And um, I actually was just listening to that on my way home from work today because it got me into that again. It's a good uh, but song. But no, the soundtrack was pretty good actually. Picked up on some uh, some creep from Radiohead there. Yeah. Which was uh, released in 1992, if I recall correctly. So good on good on the movie there. Yeah, we but, all remember what yeah, life was like when that, that came out. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nico, since you want to fire shots, why don't you go ahead and talk to me about the audio here, sir? Yeah, no, it's just like Dan said, this is a first and foremost, this is a Netflix joint. So you're going to get pretty high production quality just across the board. This is continuing the trend in other sort of Netflix entries that we reviewed here of being just really, really well made, extremely well polished and you, you can tell that they've really worked hard on this. It it sounds great. So this is not really a Netflix joint. What? Yeah, Netflix had the distribution, but this film was actually originally filmed and then was going to go through, they were going to go through, I think, 20th Century Studios or something like that. Hmm. It was weird, but they basically got pulled from some kind of schedule and then there was a bunch of acquisitions that happened and, you know, Fox bought huh. Disney and, like, Sharon no. Entertainment. Fox didn't buy no, Disney. Fox doesn't. No. Or sorry, sorry. Disney bought Fox. Okay. And then <laughs> uh, Sharon Entertainment, you know, had like the end of the distribution deal with 20th Century Studios. And Netflix in August ended up, to, I guess, put a cap on that story. Netflix wound up with the rights to distribution. But this, well. isn't like a, this isn't like a homegrown Netflix joint. Okay. Like, you know what I well, mean? Well, either way, it's very, it, it fucking fooled me. It could it, have been. It feels it like is a nice. Netflix movie, though. Yes. Yes. Not it's that definitely it's a bad thing or anything, but you know, it just has a sort of Netflix feel. <laughs> You're a real Netflix you know. looking ass movie, bro. Yeah, you bitch. <laughs> <at that point. laughs> you you well filmed the nice smooth <laughs> cinematography. I see you, but no. So uh, one thing I definitely think as well, though, in terms of the audio, they definitely definitely went out of their way to reinforce to you that this was from 1994. They really yeah. tried to put you in that in that era and that feeling. You know, they also played, you know, some hip hop from the era as well. Can't can't be lacking in that regard. Mm, true. They did as well. And one thing that I really liked was also the kind of the the lingo and some of the slang they were busting out. They they tried. They tried to bust mm -hmm. out some 90s slang here yeah. and there. But it just honestly made me feel kind of super duper old when it's like, oh yeah, people <laughs> are trying to like recreate this decade. And I'm like, God damn it. This was the eighties when I was growing up. Yeah, I guess this is sort of like like our version, our generation's version of Stranger Things, I guess, right? Kind of, yeah. kind of, yeah, kind of, yeah, kind of, yeah. So, kind of taking a cue off of that visually, Dan. I mean, does this look like the '90s? Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess. I mean, especially near the beginning, they're at the mall, and the mall, you know, I think they get like an orange Julius, you know, <laughs> or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, yep, yep, that brings me back. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but there's also a lot of like coloring was very vibrant and a lot of neon a mm -hmm. lot of like reds and blues and very neon colors which i thought was cool sometimes it can be easily overdone and i thought this kind of towed the line with like a ton of those colors but not quite overdone to me so i liked it 
All right. Nico, anything you have to say about the visuals? Uh, nothing that hasn't really been said already. The only thing that is, uh, I guess, kind of pertinent to the sort of, like, design of it is there aren't any real, like things that go bump in the night except for the the serial killers and the costume design on the serial killers is done pretty well like we've i I forget the name of the the one who's basically the femme fatale who keeps trying to get everyone to just well die but no the, the characters all look distinct even the killers look distinct and yeah it looks good i was gonna say definitely the wardrobe was was 90s for sure for for sure. sure for sure Especially the outfit that the uh, chick in the bookstore was wearing. I was mm-hmm. like, bro, yeah. that shit. That shit. I was like, that's definitely 90s as hell. I'm pretty sure she was actually in Stranger Things. She was, yeah. Yeah. Was she? Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. the latest season. Hey, guess what? Guess what, listening audience? I ain't seen it. I haven't seen no Stranger Things. That's right. Justin will receive his floggings later. It's cool. I was going to say, I was going to say, I'll be publicly walked through the street soon. So, But anyways, I want to take a quick second. We got to give it up to... um. To my man R.L. Steen, you know Stein. Stein. Okay, you know you could say it's Steen mm-hmm. too, right? You could also <laughs> say Verlusten, but that's wrong. You could hey. also say chicken curry, but you know. Hey, that's a yellow card. <laughs> that's a yellow card. <laughs> so, I was obviously just uh, just joshing you guys. R.L. Stein. I mean, we all grew up reading his books. We all, you know, we're all kids. It's no secret on the pod where. We're a bunch of 90s kids, so we grew up reading, you know, some Goosebumps and whatnot. Fear Street's kind of like Goosebumps' older, edgier brother or sister. And so did you guys read those books at all growing up, or was it mostly Goosebumps? You know, I I don't think I ever actually read the Fear Street ones. I read Goosebumps, but I don't remember reading the Fear Street. Mm. Yeah, same here. I'm, I'm pretty much in the same boat as you guys. I did read a little bit of Fear Street but not nearly as much as Goosebumps. Like, I really dove into Goosebumps. Mm -hmm. And I guess, so what is the legacy of R.L. Stein? You know, he obviously got a lot of us to read. He got a lot of us to read horror. I mean, was that kind of your first, you know, dip in the water with horror, his books? For me, it definitely was. And I think the legacy that he brings to the genre really is kind of our generation because that's how a lot of us got into horror he was Mm -hmm. writing book series that were particularly targeted towards kids what with both the sort of attitude of silliness that the all the texts had as well as the just i i don't know what to call this but the fact that he included choose your own adventure type stuff now i don't know if that was his Mm -hmm. decision or the publishers but that was something that was quintessential to the whole Goosebumps and R.L. Stein experience, I think. When you were reading through those books, you really felt like you were a character because you were making choices alongside them. So it was like, if you want Alex to open the door, turn to page 72. But if you want Alex to run away and not open that door, perhaps don't turn to page 74. And, like, there... it. It was just something that was really special. You're right. And you, you goddamn weebs. That's what we did before we had visual novels. Choose your own adventure shits. Yeah. So I'm going to get the fucking true ending. You better you better get all the right. And don't, don't fuck up once because your character just wind up dead and you got to start over. Yeah. Eat your fucking so, heart out, Natsu. <laughs> Dan, can you talk to me a little bit about, I guess, you know, we always think when you think of the biggest names in horror, you think of Stephen King, you think John Carpenter, you think you know, Wes Craven, you think a bunch of different names because they obviously made things that were more for adults. But how important is it to kind of, you know, introduce horror to kids in a way that's not over the top? You know, it's kind of a very tight line to toe, isn't it? Yeah, and I mean, I think first, yes, absolutely. And and I think it is a tight line to toe because I think especially children are going to be a little bit more sensitive. So you got to be a little bit more careful about how much horror is there, but also how much entertainment and silliness and, you know, whatever fun, I guess I should say funness is in there as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think Arl Stein is sort of like one of the the underrated goats of, of the genre of horror in general. I mean, nobody really talks about it very much. And I didn't really think about it too much until 
five minutes ago when we started this conversation that like hot take, but without him, I don't know if Stephen King would have been as big, mostly because, you know, books are a dying breed, unfortunately. And if you don't have people introduced to books and horror books at a younger age, then I don't think they're going to be as open to reading horror when they're older and, and can handle a Stephen King book and can understand and have the maturity for it, you know? That's fair. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. I want to take us here, and I guess this is a unique kind of kind of film because this is part of a trilogy, but it's not like a trilogy where we came out with a movie and it did well, so we did another one and another one. The plan for this, it was always to have these three movies, Fear Street Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3. It's a story told in three parts. In a way, it's almost kind of akin to a miniseries almost with just the different parts that it has, but... You know, we know from like it, it has the modern remake has part one and part two. I've not seen a horror movie in three parts, again, outside of like a mini series like the old it. So, Nico, what do we think about this being a trilogy? Does this give time for the narrative or how do you feel about this? So I am really excited to see the next two films, particularly because they both take place in, and this isn't spoilers, it's just the fucking title. They both take place at least some part in the past. So given that, a lot of times when we have sequels in horror, it comes through the fact that, oh, the, you know, the movie does well at the box office and everyone gets big paychecks and the studio is like, oh, we want some more of this. So it's almost a reactionary thing. It's not usually brought to these any kind of like you know Sundance where you have a pitch like okay this is going to be three movies it's no you have just the one and then you you go from there so on that note I think it's really interesting how they didn't really squander any opportunities for world building I think there was no wasted moment on the on any of the, the sort of exposition, really. Like, there weren't any kind of missing holes that I was left wondering, like, oh, if there, it's very clear that something is supposed to be here, but we just don't know yet. I hope that makes sense. No, it totally does. Yeah. Now, Dan, I almost want to take things a step further with you. So we know it's a trilogy. We know that's a thing. But in modern, I guess, the cinematic experience of, you know, the 2020s, late 2010s, everything's a cinematic universe. I know you're the man with his his air to the sky and his eyes on the ground. Have you heard a rumor maybe about a little bit of a cinematic universe being built up here? I have. I was actually reading an interview with the director, and she had stated that there was going to be a potential cinematic universe. If this does well enough and everyone likes it, there's enough openness in the history of Shady Side that will let you explore some of the, the history. And since... They've already kind of built it out where it takes place over such a large period of time. Yeah. It's easy to kind of insert these different uh, time frames and different characters and things and incorporate them into the universe. And she had said that, you know, some ideas may be TV shows, miniseries, some may be one off movies exploring a particular character or something. And I think that would be really cool. And I'm kind of excited for that. Agreed. Agreed. Fucking agreed. Now, Real quick, I want to start getting into the, you know, into the soup of this movie, so to speak. Mm. So first off, the monsters that we see. So we're kind of introduced to three killers here. We've got a axe wielding kind of maniac. We've got, you know, as Nico said, the femme fatale. She has like a razor blade and she tries to slice people up. And last but not least... We've got a very non-copyright friendly, <laughs> not ghost face, not ghost um, face. killer that's running around with a knife much. He, he's quite similar to the to the notorious killer from Scream, really. How have we not reviewed Scream yet? Yeah, I don't what know. You, it's a bit too self-aware, not playing. We should. We will. <laughs> but how do we feel about these three monsters here? Our kind of triumvirate of terror, if you will. How do you... Uh -huh. How do you feel? No, nah, that's us. I felt fucking around. But yeah. how do you guys feel about them? Just open to the class. Go ahead. I like them. I thought that they provide good contrast with each other. Mm -hmm. They're all very different characters. Like you said, you've got the axe wounded maniac who has like a sack over his head so you can't see his features or anything, but he just literally just like charges at people with his axe. And then you've got 
you know, the, the, the not ghost face running around <laughs> and the femme fatale just kind of is, is a little bit more, uh, seductive, I guess. And, and it sound weird, but slippery. I don't what know. do you mean? But I don't know. I feel like she she's not quite as straightforward. I'm here to kill you. Like she definitely like lures people in mm. and kind of gets uh, away easily sometimes too. But I don't know. Um, and I, I just like the contrast between the three of them and and just kind of going back to the cinematic universe aspect of it. I'm sure we'll see you know more you know delving into the past of some of them, which I'm kind of excited for. Yeah, and I mean. First off, I thought it was hilarious that the you know the the femme fatale she was totally Simon's kryptonite. Mm-hmm. Simon yeah. kept saying over and over like she's, she's so hot, she, she's so hot, she's gonna kill me, but she's kind of hot too. And like in That's that me. moment, I'm Simon. My heart, my heart. <laughs> well, I was gonna say I was thinking about both of you when when they said that. <laughs> That's, That's about fair. right. That's about right. But I. I want to know as well. So we talked about them. Now let's talk about our main cast here. First off, call out your favorite character. Go ahead. We'll start with you, Dan. Who's your favorite character in this movie? I think Josh. Yeah? Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Josh is also my favorite character as well. Okay. Of course. And Nico, how about you? I really like Kate. I think that her and Simon are perfect foils for each other. I think Kate was my second favorite. You know what? Nico, you are a Kate because you will get someone killed. So yeah, I agree with wow. you. I could see. Yeah, it's probably you. I could see why. Yeah, yeah. And you know what's funny? You know what's funny? So, anyways, real quick about Josh before I get in, you know, to attack mode on Nico here. <laughs> I like Josh because I almost feel like his little side story sometimes I enjoyed more than what was going on between Dina and Sam, only because I really, I really can relate to a character like Josh, where. He's kind of that he's kind of that nerdy kid, but not only is he a nerdy kid, he was a nerdy minority, much like myself. So it's kind of like, you know, like a weird kind of space, you know, especially when back in the 90s, especially like being being nerdy was largely, you know, relegated to being white. So to be a nerd in that time period was already difficult enough as is. But I thought it was cool. And also all the pro gamers out there will know. My man quoting the Konami yep. code like it's a Bible just verse. Say yep. That. Yep. Mm-hmm. I thought that was pretty cool. And also, it actually, believe it or not, it reminds me of something that I used to do like way back in the day when I was a kid. So anyone who plays Street Fighter knows the input for Akuma's uh, Shun Goku Satsu, square, square, forward, XR1, if you're playing on PlayStation. Light punch, light punch, forward, light kick, heavy punch if you are arcade. But oh. I used to literally sit there, and I can literally pull that off like the button motion for that, I can pull that off of my sleep. And like sometimes when I get stressed out, I just grab my controller, even if the game wasn't on, and I would just like mash the Shun Goku Satsu I've on my controller. I've seen him do it, yeah. Yeah, like I'll just pick up a controller and start mashing it. And it was just like something to like take my mind off what I'm doing, get myself in my zone. So probably for him, the Konami code was the same way, which I thought was really cool, um, him reciting it to get himself psyched up. Yeah, it's like his mantra. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I thought that show was pretty cool. I also thought it was ironic because... You know the Konami code gives you back lives, and he never died. Yeah. He didn't need he didn't need an extra life. Oh, that's true. true. Which that's <laughs> I thought point. that was pretty funny. That was pretty funny. And real quick, I want to ask any least favorite characters from you guys, or any characters you didn't necessarily like in the movie. I liked everyone, honestly. You like everyone? That's respectful. I liked everyone enough, I guess. All right. I didn't like Dino. Oh, you didn't? No. No. Why? I'll tell you why I didn't like Dino. I feel like Dina was largely pointless, aside from her relationship with Sam, which is like part of the story. Because when like things need to happen, Josh drives a big piece of this plot. Mm-hmm. Like shit happens, Josh got it solved. Dina doesn't really do too much in terms of the plot, except for she drowned Sam. Which, true, but I kind of feel like anyone could have drowned Sam. And Dina was also. I yeah, feel like she was kind of You could have drowned Sam. Hey Dan, you could have drowned Sam. Hey, I, I feel like it's true though. And then like the thing about <laughs> Dina that like killed me was, yeah, you know, two of like my close friends just got like massacred, but I did get Sam in the end. So yeah, pretty okay true. with the way this turned out. Yeah. And like yeah. when it comes to Sam, she's like super defensive of Sam, and like I get it. Of course you'd be. You know, she she loves her, so mm-hmm. you would be super defensive, but. Fuck me, man. 
like, we'll talk about it later, but did you see what the fuck happened to Kate? Mm -hmm. And you can see that. And then, like, they, they had a sleepover the same night. Sam's like, because Dina's like, I'll see you tomorrow. And Sam's like, fuck that. I'll see you tonight. I'm like, oh, shit. Y'all really didn't give a fuck. That was pretty funny. Y'all really didn't give a fuck. Yeah. So that was that was wild. But that's my take on Dina. I also didn't like Sam too much because I felt like she was largely there to play the victim. She didn't really was, yeah, do I was too gonna much. Say, I think... I, I didn't mind her too much, but if I had to choose, I think Sam would be my least favorite. That's fair. That's fair and correct. So, Nico, I want to ask you here. Now, okay, okay. 1994. Mm. Good vintage? Great year? Fantastic year. How accurate would you say this movie is to the year 1994? Uh, Just based on your recollection. Yeah, based off of my recollection of 1994, which we all know is uh, the 19... I don't fucking know, dude. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> like, Damn. it looks 90s enough to me. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks pretty 90s. I mean, like we've kind of said in the you know beginning, it's we got some 90s references music. We got the, the mall with some uh, Orange Julie. So it looked like Simon worked at, or not Simon, but the, uh, the dude... Then Ryan, I think, yeah, uh, yeah. worked at like Spencer's. I think that was was that a Spencer's? Yeah, Spencer's. It, yeah, it yeah, looked it like Spencer's. it, anyways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then just the fact that she's at a bookstore, like yeah. the, the bookstores yeah. don't really exist much anymore. So I mean, yeah, I, th I thought it was you know fairly nineties. All right, yeah, I'd have to say you know my memory of that year is a little foggy, but <laughs> I definitely, I definitely feel like you know at least I feel like it captures the spirit enough. Yeah. So I think it's fair now. Yeah. When I was watching it, I definitely had a feeling, oh, yeah, this this movie feels like when I was three or four years old. I'll say, you know, next time, well, you better you better bone up on your history because I'm going to ask you how the mm. next one represented 1978. And then I don't know what year the, the third one is. I'm assuming it's 1666. Yeah. So you better toss on your I don't know what they wore back then, your robe. No, don't wear yeah. your robe. <laughs> <laughs> I got like three robes chilling already, bro. Uh, oh, trust me. We know. <laughs> so what kind of horror is this, Dan? You consider this to be the altogether slasher or is it something different? Yeah, I'd say it's a, yeah, yeah. I think it's just a, a pretty straightforward slasher. It's got a couple little twists in there, kind of with the the haunt, oh, not always say haunt. Well, yeah, I mean, haunting, possession kind of at the end, some sort of back lore aside from just this is a killer running around killing people. Like, there's a reason and there's a backstory to it that I think they're mm -hmm. going to, well, I know they're going to explore more, but I'd say for, for the most part, it's a, it's a slasher, you know? Perfect. Nico, how about you? So I am going to answer this by making a comparison. Oh, Lord. I think this movie is a lot like it. Honestly, you know what? That's a, that's a round is, of applause for me. It's fair. Yeah. That's a fair comparison. This is a movie that I, I cards on the table. I don't know if this is already a thing, but this feels like to me a like a teen mm -hmm. movie or teen horror movie. Just like oh, this that is specific definitely. flavor. Yeah. Like yes. you've got it's a very centralized location to uh, the town they're all in takes place in a high school. There's a whole lot of camaraderie between the cast and they work together to sort of like uncover the secrets of not only the town, but what's really going on. And all of that is the stuff that appears in movies that are, you know, more so targeted towards teens, not necessarily just in the horror genre, but you get what I mean, because that's, you know, when you're a teenager, you have less experiences and most of your world is where you grew up. So it makes sense that a lot of the development happens in such a small town. That's fair. And I think, you know, talking about this, first off, I think this is a slasher too. So let's just get that out the way. But I think that one thing that's really cool is you talked about it being a teen movie, I do think it's a teen movie, and I do think it is generally marketed towards teenagers. You know, like, not even just teenagers, maybe even kids maybe a little bit under that, although this has a very naughty R rating. So you shouldn't watch this movie if you're under the age of 16. Now nah, we don't give a fuck, go wild, fam. <laughs> I'm over here trying to back up the MPAA, okay? No gods, us. no masters. <laughs> <They> <laughs> wow. So 
I will say it. I feel like it also is a little bit for people who grew up in the '90s. Just a touch. This one. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Because I think nowadays, especially in the age of streaming and all this stuff like that, like people consume a ton of media, and this shit is cool. Like you know, there's. I don't think it's a one to one by any means, but you know that that series Riverdale, like the modern mm-hmm. gritty remake. Oh yeah, they it's a did? lot like that in terms of the just yeah. general vibe. Absolutely, absolutely. So I like that. I like that. Now, here on DOTD, you know we got to talk about it. It's been a little while, or maybe it hasn't. This isn't prestige, prestige horror, God damn it, Justin. Stop asking. You know what? I'm sorry. I won't <laughs> ask that until we review beep. I'm going to put a beep in there. <laughs> now, okay. let me ask this. This movie didn't really have a ton of kills, but it did have some kills. What was your favorite kill of the killings that killed in this movie? For me, I think pretty much everyone dies by knife, except, <laughs> except for one person. Go ahead, lay it on the table, bro. Motherfucking Kate. Bro. Oof. Bro. Oof. That, that, her kill surprised me. I was, I literally Same. said, I, I was not expecting that. She, they're in the, Go into detail. the grocery store. And they're getting chased by the killers is sort of, you know, the climax when they're trying to keep everyone, keep the killers away from Sam while they OD and drown Sam. Um, so How fucking insane does that sound? The sentence you <laughs> just said. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> yep. So the killer, one of the killers chases Kate and knocks her like onto this like bread cutting machine thing. And it's got like the... The bread bread slicer. slicer. Yeah, so it's got like five or six like blades up and down. And her head goes right through that. And (sighs) I was, you know, there's a a minute of like tension of, oh, no, is she going to escape in time or whatever? And then she just gets fucked right up. And I I was pretty shocked at that one. They show it. They don't shy away. (laughs) No, No, they don't. I I am almost convinced that that's what got this movie the R rating. Like, I don't remember if they ever say fuck. Like, I don't, I don't remember did. if they ever say fuck, but I felt like the blood was acceptable. I felt like there wasn't too much going wrong, and that happened, and I was like, Jesus Christ, that's exactly why this shit got an R rating right here. Yep. Yeah. And fun fact, uh, apparently the art department argued that that would not be possible, and they, like, were so adamant at it that they got a watermelon and ran the watermelon through the bread slicer, <laughs> and then when it worked... Like the whole production crew just started cheering and it ended up in the movie. <laughs> but the art department was convinced it would not work. So, you know what's interesting? I thought for sure Josh was going to save her. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought he was going to like yeah. barrel through and save her, but it was like, nah, nah, it's not really about to happen. So, <laughs> that was interesting. That was interesting. Now, I agree with you, Dan. I think that's probably everyone's best kill in the movie. Like, real talk. That was the one to write home about. I honestly enjoyed some of them more now it's not really a kill but i felt like they almost kind of played with your what you expected a little bit with this movie so we kind of realized that sam is you know going to get possessed and try and kill dina at the very end Mm. and dina turns around and is like oh sam and sam's already got the knife in her stomach i thought it wasn't a kill but i just thought that was a cool moment because dan like i said you took the best kill already so i thought there was that I'm sorry to cut you off. I do have a question for you, though. How do you feel about Simon not being killed by a femme fatale? I thought it was a lot of, you know, a lot of smoke with no fire. Like, they they pretty much, like, called it that that's how he was going to meet his fate. Yeah. And you know what the biggest, strongest indicator of that was? Hmm. There's a scene where everyone washes off the blood and they all pair up, except for Simon, mm. who's by himself. Yeah, true. And... You know, there's kind of like a little bit of, you know, a little bit of sexual moments between Dina and Sam, as well as Josh and Kate. And motherfucking Simon just like looks at himself in the mirror and is so (laughs) aroused that he just like beats off. And then Mm -hmm. fucking he gets out of the bathroom and he's like, you guys were like going to pound town. Well, me too. And I was like, bro, relax. And he's all like, this dude is like, I mean, yeah, okay high school teenager whatever this dude is like he, he is he is trying to knock boots like he's trying to he's trying to fuck 
here's the weird thing about that though like you come out of the like little whatever area you were in you see like two people who or four people i guess who like they've got some kind of feelings for each other and your first reaction is to be like hey guys i just jacked it <laughs> like what the fuck bro but then like he's always like every time the femme fatale's reference he's like oh dude she's so fucking hot though and i was like dude she's gonna just seduce him and kill him mm-hmm. like yeah. that's a, that's what's gonna happen but it didn't that's actually not what happened so yeah dan a lot of words to your uh small yeah. answer there yeah small question rather but nico any thoughts from you just maybe any just cool scenes since we kind of covered the best kill already um yeah it's i i just keep coming back to the the climax of the movie where <laughs> somehow they're like let's just shove a bunch of drugs down her throat and maybe that'll work <laughs> there's this like fucking rube goldberg machine of different combinations of drugs that go into <laughs> her it's like all right this one will make you feel real nice then this one will turn you and make you go to sleep this one will kill you but only half kill you this next part this will really kill you but this next one you got to take this one don't forget because this one brings you back all right you got all that and then she just like takes all of them unsuccessfully anyway like what was the fucking point (laughs) i I like the i like the way when they were feeding her the pills like she like can't take any more pills and so dina just starts like shoving pills down her throat (laughs) and i was like yo this plan is not gonna work like, this was a horrible idea. But also, this little side plot of Kate and Simon being, like, drug dealers. And they, they deal pills. But do they keep the stash at the grocery store? Like, I was so confused yeah. why they went there. I assume I like, they, like, raided the pharmacy section or something. I guess, maybe, but I thought they had the pills. They they might have. They might have. Yeah, they got the pills from, from Betty. Yeah. At the Robert. hospital. The one dude in the hospital yeah. oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 but also like as a side note audience especially if you're of a impressionable age don't ever fucking try that nope. like don't ever fucking try that you will not come back this, this chick took like 50 fucking pills like do not do that assorted pills and then the answer was gonna be we're gonna bring you back with fucking epinephrine because yes that's what you use to fucking bring someone back well, hey, it worked after she was drowned. Well, yeah, see, she she drowned, so the drowning cancels out the pills. Oh, right. It's like it's right. like when you get a status effect in an RPG and then you get knocked out and come back. You don't keep the poison. Mm. That's what happened to her. Yeah, I guess. It's like True. she got slowed and then she got stabbed, but on the weapon there is a status effect of haste. Ah, ah there I you see. go. I there see. you go. Now, I want to talk about what would you do? So for this, what would you do? We're not going to be ourselves here. Not entirely. I want to ask everybody. And we're going to, the two of us that aren't chosen will choose for the one that is chosen. What? What (laughs) characters are we? So, Nico, what character is Dan? Who is Dan in this, in this film? Who is Dan? I feel like Dan's Josh. Dan's Josh? I feel like Dan's Josh. Dan is the one who has his head on his shoulders set straight mm. and yes. he like just knows how to get shit done. He takes it seriously. He doesn't fuck around. There we go. Uh, Dan, Dan, you're officially Fair. Josh. Fair. Now, uh, Dan, who's Nico? Mm. Mm. I think Nico would be either. I think he'd be Simon. Simon? I was going for either Simon or Kate. That's but, yeah, that was what I was debating too. But nah, I'm gonna go. Oh man, it's am tough. I disrespected my am I disrespecting my boy by saying he's Simon? Nah, you're good, dude. I've already talked <laughs> at, at length about I have a weakness for pretty women. And so. see the, the the hard part for me is you could also be Simon, Justin. I know. So maybe like, maybe we should ask who. what character do I best fit? Is Simon the only character I really fit, or do I fit anyone else? You fit questionable Betty. silence. Can hey. you, are, I, I know you're you're Ryan. <laughs> oh, I'm Ryan. Oh. Nicole Space. <laughs> no, no, I, th- I think you're Sam. Or, um, I think you're. you're We're Simon. both Simon. Yeah. All right, yeah, I'm Simon. I would definitely definitely dead from that for sure. Mm. So I guess that makes Nico Kate, huh? Yeah. Or just also Simon, but yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, well, I'll be Kate. That's fine. Of, for purposes of this exercise, you're Kate. So. 
first off, you know, so let's say we've got a friend is it's 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 Dina and you know Dina's got all this beef or slash pent up romance for Sam that's in our rival town of, you know, fuck those people from Sunnyville or wherever the fuck they're from. And you know what fucked me up first off? They were calling shady side like shitty side. Mm -hmm. And I was like, bitch, you can make the same joke about your town. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, like it's yeah. not that funny or original. But so let's say we're, you know, on the bus ride back home because we're all either band members, cheerleaders, or members of the football team. And that car starts tailgating. Would you pelt them with that big ass jug of Gatorade? Or what would you do to get revenge on them? If anything. Not a goddamn thing. <laughs> yeah, I probably wouldn't do anything either, to be honest. <laughs> I would just like pull out my Game Boy Advance if this was in, or sorry, Game Boy, and be like, yo, let's uh, play Tetris or something. I don't fucking know. Yeah, Tetris is like all they had. But no, so. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't really care. Just be like, I, I mean, are you they tailgating, were... like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you going to do? Run into a bus? Okay. <laughs> I mean, Simon was out here, like, giving him the full moon. I was like, that's actually probably, probably yeah. the best thing you could do. That like wasn't it... Simon, was it? It was, it was. Yeah. Oh, maybe it was. I don't know. But I don't know. But the either that or just flick them off. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, about yeah. It. yeah, that's about it. I don't know. I was, like, thinking, like, maybe you could do some, like, wild boy shit. Like, you could open, like, the back door and then piss on them. But that might be a wow. bit <laughs> Like, <laughs> bro, I'm not about to whip it out in front of a whole bus full of people, that's, bro. That's right, not right, pissing right on them. That. That's pissing at them. And that's right, worse right. it's, liter it's, it's literally pissing <laughs> into the wind. In their general direction. <laughs> All right. See, that's why I, I wouldn't do that, though. I can't do that. You're right. You're right. You're right. Maybe, like, you, like, secretly, like, pee in a bottle and then pelt them with the bottle. Yeah, that's a better goes, of an idea. <laughs> it just goes, boop. <laughs> All right. So moving on to the next set piece. <laughs> so the killers are coming after Dina and Sam, and we kind of realize that, wait a second, the killers don't want us. They want Sam. Would we have the same reaction of trying to, like, push her into the hallway and just let her meet her fate? Or would you actively try to, like, you know, save her? I think I would actively try to save her. And then once it got to the point where they were like, let's rub your blood all over me and I'll attract the killers to get them away from you. <laughs> then I'd just be like, nah, sorry, you're fine. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, I, I, would, I would try for a little bit. And then I'd be like, all right, you're done. <laughs> so, I guess... You haven't unlocked a social link with Dan high enough yet no. for that. <laughs> So I guess, you know, Nico asking you the same question. You agree? Like Sam's just done? Yeah, I mean, I would feel really bad, but I'm not about to give myself hepatitis for uh, the girl I just met. Mm. Mm -hmm. Strong words for anyone. So, <laughs> I'm going to say that I would be that dude who, like, tangentially by, like, relations. If I was Simon, then I fuck with Kate and Dina. Like, that's it. So... Dina really wants to save Sam. I guess I maybe would, because just, like, I don't know. But I also kind of feel like, now let's say it was, like, us. It's us, like, Dan, Nico, and Just. Like, Dan, if Nico was over here getting, like, stalked by supernatural forces of the unknown, and it was like, bro, we got to, like, hatch a plot to save Nico. Are we out here trying to save Nico? Hell yeah. I'm down for that shit. But I also would be like, yo, we're not going to do this fucking play if, like, having someone paint blood on me Nope. So that I can run interference. That's dumb nah. as shit. But you come up with a much smarter but also wacky plan. Are you going to shove so many drugs down my throat? Is nah. that part of the process? No. So now, so now we're, that's what I'm going to say. So what's the plan? So what's the plan to get Nico? Because Nico, you are the person. You. So here's yeah. what happened, Nico. You were just walking around one night in the woods and... I don't know, I don't know, but like you happen to accidentally like kick over a tree that hit a rock that hit a fish and the fish flopped into the grave and messed up her bones. So now you've unearthed the grave of the witch, Sarah. It's a big her fucking name. fish. That is a big fish. So it's a real big fish. So now I want to know, Dan, so we know we have to stop Nico's heart or like put him into some kind of cardiac arrest. Where do we go and what's our plan? We go to fucking sushi now or whatever that new sushi <laughs> spot nearby you is that we discovered. True. And, oh, uh, the fucking yeah. locked up one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, we just do our operation in there. Come get your All crab right. rangoon, bitch. 
I mean, the operation is to just feed Nico some shellfish, wait for him to go into anaphylactic shock, wait for his pulse to dead out, and then bring him back with an EpiPen. Yeah. Yeah, with just one! Just one! Yeah, Nico, unfortunately, I'm going to stab you with a whole fucking handful of fucking EpiPens and hope for the best, fam. Ah, beans. <laughs> but no, well, fair it's enough. It's been fun. Fair enough, fair enough. So yeah, I feel like we have a better plan than them, you know? Yeah, I'm glad. Totally. Glad we could come up with that. So now, let's go ahead and take a look at the critic score, shall we? So, for part one, we're looking at an 82% fresh from the critics. Unfortunately, from the audience, we're looking at a 63%. It's kind of an oof. Wow. I wonder what they didn't like as much. So I read some of their reviews on IMDb. Oh, yeah? I don't, I don't agree with them. Because oh. I, I don't know. A lot of the reviews were, were just like, oh, this movie wasn't very realistic. You wouldn't act like that <laughs> no in real shit. life. No <laughs> shit. Well, no shit. Like, <laughs> duh. I don't know. I'm like, pretty sure a fucking bread slicer won't fillet your goddamn dome either. Like, well, I'm... Pr- I, I'm pretty sure that would just be like, you know, maybe get scratched, maybe a lesion, but that shit wouldn't go through bone. Fuck out of here. Bone is stronger than steel, inch per inch for inch. Hmm. It's also stronger than that. bread. <laughs> would you believe that? A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> I thought she was just going to walk out with like a gnarly scar on her forehead or something. Yeah, but like... yeah, like some battle damage. Get some like character development looking all scarred and shit. But, but... Be that as it may, I think it's time for us to give our scores. So maybe give me your score. You know, maybe just a little bit that you liked and a little bit that you may have not liked. So let's go ahead and lead with you, Nico. I feel like you're looking like you're from the 90s today. Okay. All right. I, I look like I'm from the 90s every day, boy. You already know. I already know. I am. Um, I'm going to give this one an 85. I really oh, yeah? liked it. It had a lot to go around and it didn't really squander anything. There were moments on the pod tonight where we were all joking about like, you know, obviously ep- EpiPens don't work like that and don't just guzzle a bunch of fucking drugs like duh. But if you are willing to put that into your sort of suspension of disbelief that you would normally have in a horror movie, I think you'll have a great time with this. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Dan, why don't you go ahead and weigh your anchor? I agree 100% with what Nico just said. (laughs) I also, whenever we watch like a teen kind of horror movie, it takes me like 10 or 15 minutes to get acclimated. In the first few minutes, I'm always like, I'm like, no, this is like, oh, really? This is like cringeworthy drama, high school drama. And then after that, I'm like, wait, no, nah, this this is good. Like, I understand what this movie is. I get it. And then I'm just like, this is fun. This is cool. You know, whatever. And again, I, I just want to echo literally everything Nico said. Uh, it was a fun movie. I actually am really excited to see the next couple ones. And I'm really excited to see where they go with it. And, and I thought it was cool because they... You know, it's it's the trilogy and planned trilogy, but I thought that this movie was good as a standalone as well. Like Definitely I wasn't, agreed. the movie didn't finish and I wasn't left with like feeling empty or whatever, you know? And, and like, obviously they didn't finish the plot. Like, you know, somehow they're going to save Sam or at least try. And I'm interested to see how they incorporate the current timeline with the past timelines as well. So I'm just really excited to see it. I had a great time. Uh, 87 for me. Yo, you ho. Uh, 87 for me. I think that I really, 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 really like this movie a lot. I think when you watch a movie, you definitely have to take into account the audience and how it's supposed to be, you know? And I think that this is totally meant for a kind of a teenage or young at heart audience. And I, I loved it, you know? And there's parts that I can pick apart or parts that I could really get down on, but I can suspend my disbelief for this one. It's 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 good enough. And to be honest, like if I was, you know, if I was in my early teens, mid teens and watch this, I'd, I'd fucking love it. Like I would fucking love this. Oh, yeah. Like mm-hmm. I fully expect my students in a couple of weeks to be just like raving about this. Like this shit is really, really, really fucking good. And as far as like things I didn't like, like, there were small, minor things here and there. Like, up to now, Sam's uh, Sam's kind of temporary boyfriend. I wasn't sure why he died because I didn't think he had blood on him. It's because he got stabbed. That's why he died. Fair enough. People mm, die when yeah. they're killed. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, that, that solves that one for me. But, <laughs> yeah. 
one thing that I was super, 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 super fucking excited about, and I cannot wait because I love this kind of shit. There's a janitor who works at the mall. And oh, he yeah. gets arrested at the start of the movie. And throughout the movie, we see him. He's kind of in the jail being questioned. And at the very end, Josh helps him. He gives him a little bit of help to break out of the jail. And he gives him a card. And he says, I owe you one. How much are you willing to bet mm-hmm. the shit's about to go down? And then it's like, because I know the older, not old, old, but like older members, like the police captain or whatever else, mm-hmm. he knows something's going yeah. on. Because yeah. he left a note at someone's house that was like, it's, it's happening, happening again. again. So he knows something's going on and he talked to the janitor and he was like, the prodigal son returns. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh shit, like what is this dude about? Like he's not really a janitor, like what's going on? And like, I I just love that shit. I fucking love that shit. In 87 for me, I really fucking dig this movie. So now, recommend? Yeah, recommend for me. Nico, Dan? Oh, absolutely. Are we giving this one the golden seal though? Arf, arf, arf. That's what the seal. fuck was that? That's a seal. Arf, oh. arf, arf, arf. Oh, okay. I don't think I can just because it, with a Golden Seal movie, I, I'm i not even really ever taken out of the spending my disbelief. Like, y- there's never a moment in other go Well, no, no. All right, fair enough. This is this is by the the razor's edge of a bread slicer for me, but no. it's so close. It's yeah. really good. I agree. Yeah, it's really good. Well, I guess that's that. So, dear listeners, drop us a line. We're on Facebook. Don't open that door. We're also on Twitter and Instagram at dotd horror. But that's been it from your class of Dan, Nico, and Just. Take care of one another. Don't copy some of the behaviors in this movie. <laughs> And as always, dear listeners, any of them really. Don't open that door. Bye. D, I won't do drugs. A won't, a have, won't have an attitude. <laughs> I will respect, respect myself. myself. E, I, I will educate, educate me now. now. They didn't do shit for us. For you, maybe. <laughs> 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 <laughs>